power supplies are basically completely unavailable on retailers right now, at least most of them are. And so we've had a lot of our viewers asking us to investigate where the power supplies have gone and when we can expect to see them coming back to wide scale retail availability. In the process of so doing, we've also learned that video cards and motherboards are becoming rarer to find these days as well. So the easy answer to where did it all go is obviously human malware. But there's a whole lot more nuance to it than that. And we've spoken with manufacturing sources on record and off record. We also have a ton of manufacturing experience ourselves. The mod mats we've been making for a couple of years now, and that involves the same process they go through, just with a different type of product. So we've got a lot of firsthand experience we can add to this. But we're gonna be digging into the nuance today alongside information on when you can expect the computer hardware components to normalize in retail availability, and when you should be looking at stores for purchasing them. We also have interesting information on things like the average margin for a power supply and some of the usual timelines for making them. So there's some cool information in here that you can learn from that's just interesting to know. Before that, this video is brought to you by MSI and the Z490 Unify ITX motherboard for Intel 10 series CPUs. The MSI Z490 Unify ITX board benefits from a memory layout that makes memory overclocking easy, positioning the board well for enthusiasts who want to tinker on a bench or in an ITX system. The MSI Z490 Unify runs 90 amp power stages, a 10 layer PCB, and seats the memory as close to the socket as possible, all of which benefit the overclocking experience. Learn more at the link in the description below. So power supplies again are either low availability or not available at all right now. It's a comment, a tweet we've seen constantly over the last couple of weeks, people asking us to investigate it. And so that's what we've done. We've toured a lot of factories over the last couple of years. We have a whole factory tour series on the channel and we have contact with a lot of those still. So we've gotten information from various places for this. A couple of notes, we're gonna have some filler B-roll in here of factories, of power supplies, things like that, relevant products. And when the B-roll pops up of that product, it doesn't mean anything about where the information came from. If we're quoting someone and there's B-roll, it doesn't necessarily mean it came from that source. The video editors for this video have no idea with whom I spoke to get the information for the video, so they're isolated from it and it's basically whatever they show is just gonna be to fill the space. So it's randomly selected, there's no implication of who provided the information. Okay, so first off, we need to talk about the usual manufacturing delays around the first half of the year. And first remember that Lunar New Year affects shipping and production timelines annually. Every year, sometime between end of January and beginning of March roughly, most of the industry stops manufacturing things for a little while. Kicking off manufacturing runs in January and splitting them around Lunar New Year can also be challenging. This is something we avoid at our own company because different workers will be on staff before and after the holiday and different supervisors will be there. That means that quality can change mid-run, which causes QC issues and other uh, challenges where you might have to get new samples. Most companies try to not split manufacturing orders around the holiday, which means there's already a strain on supply. That expected delay compounded with a few things this year. First of all, with the virus, China extended Chinese New Year. The state council announced the extension for several of its major municipalities, including Shanghai, Suzhou, Nanjing, Wuxi, Ningbo, and critically, a couple of other major factory districts like Guangzhou and Shenzhen. Most PC part manufacturers happen to be in Guangzhou, Shenzhen, uh, Dongguan, and the Guangdong province near the ports. There's extended holidays there, and so manufacturing didn't really get started again until about February 5th to 15th. And even in that window, workforce was slow to return, and the factories operated at low capacity. This is true normally, but it was amplified this year. Factories were also getting inspected by government for health, and in some cases, factories were shut down if they had an instance of a human malware outbreak where they needed to be shut down for full cleaning. That meant some of these factories weren't really up and operating at capacity again until March. So we had a three month window of low or zero supply, which meant running off of whatever was in the warehouses at the time that this all started. For perspective, most cooler case and power supply manufacturers are either in Huizhou, Shenzhen, or elsewhere in the Guangdong province. And they were all affected. One factory that we've worked with is in Tainan, in Taiwan and was mostly unaffected by all this, but even though they could operate at high capacity, the real problem was that they couldn't get all those small parts that go through the SMT lines. All the pick and place components that get Gatling gunned onto the PCBs 
are made in either China or Japan, for the most part, and that meant no supply, even for factories outside of China, like the one in Tainan. The next issue was shipping. With the factories up and operating again, the next challenge, obviously, was getting the products out of the country and to wherever they need to go, Europe, the US, South America, or elsewhere. And so the ports were completely jammed with products. That was amplified by a massive and higher priority influx of things like PPE and other essential products. So the easing further of environmental regulations in China helped to increase the factory capacity and the amount of work they could output, but knock-on effects obviously not discussed in this piece, but the result of that further was compounding the limited availability of shipping space and freight space in boats. There just weren't enough vehicles to take products out of the country. Commercial passenger jets often take freight alongside passenger baggage. In public information, the USPS, US Shipping Service, has leased space on upwards of 15,000 passenger flights per day during normal operations, so the past few years, out of the normal operation pre-virus 25,000 flights per day. Commercial airlines make up to 10% of their gross revenue on freight transport, if you look at any of the investor call documents. With none of those flights in the air now, because passengers aren't flying or are flying at reduced volume, the freight space is lost and air shipping becomes prohibitively expensive and relegated mostly to large freight hauler planes or to boats. We've experienced this ourselves with the mod mats. In a previous news video, we talked about this, where typically we air freight our mod mats if we can to try and get them in to keep up with the back orders because we don't want people waiting too long to get their item that they've ordered. And we know as customers what it feels like. It's still a small company, so I'm very close to being a, a customer of the product that I make. So we air freight them, and this time air freighting was four to five times the cost. I can't really give exact numbers, but suffice to say it was over 10 grand to import the mats this time, and most of that was the shipping cost. So typically we're significantly under that. But you end up in a scenario where with something like a power supply, where they have less margin, they really can't afford to just throw it on a plane and air freight it, especially now. We lost almost all of our margin by doing that, and we're a smaller company, so it's easier for us to do. So that's why you see power supply companies who have a heavy object that they're shipping going by boat. Now, you can do express freight to LA via boat and truck it across the country as a middle step, but typically with ocean freight, for us on the East Coast, you see times of 45 to 60 days arrival with express freight, it goes to LA and then you take a truck across the country. That's, it cuts it down by about 10 days. With air freight, it's something like seven to 10 days to the East Coast. So times are a little shorter for LA where most of the companies are importing their stuff, but you get the idea. There is another problem though, and that's that ocean freight has extremely limited capacity right now. So even if you wanna put your products on a boat and you're okay with that, you can't, there's not enough space. One of the top two power supply sellers in the US, the top two companies, one of those in the uh, listing of highest sales, told us that they have containers on basically every boat coming into port in California right now, a power supply container on every single one of those boats. The problem is though, they wanted to buy more space on each boat, but the space is being reserved for other things like PPE shipments. So they can't compete with that. They can't just buy the space out from under them. And other essentials are on there too. So this means that some ships can only fit one to three containers of power supplies on them. And once those arrive to port, some retailers like Newegg and Micro Center, they buy their products that they sell often buy the container. So container gets off the ship, the truck comes and picks it up, and that truck brings it straight to Newegg or whomever it may be and drops it off and that's the end of its journey. Then it gets listed on the site and it all disappears within hours. So that's why you're seeing such limited availability of the products. Note that freight is also charged by either dim weight or just weight, whichever is worse for the importer. So that means that the size of the power supply matters less than the weight here, while the size of our mod mats matters more than the weight, although both are high in this instance. Power supplies, you're talking about something that's maybe six pounds, that's not cheap to ship by air, and they don't have the margin. Power supply margin is about 10 to 15%, depending on the PSU, with the average closer to 15%. This is information that we collected off record through manufacturing contacts in the industry, and we just averaged the bulk of them. There's a heavy brick of steel, that's the power supply, and it's already expensive to ship on pallets, and 
It's a race to the bottom of margin industry where everybody's competing with each other. So that's what you end up with. An off-record contact answered our question about PSU logistical challenges and availability as follows. Quote, PSUs are heavy and take a lot of space. We typically don't want to air freight them, and right now there are fewer flights, and most of those are filled with PPE. It took a while for the supply chain to get back up and running after Chinese New Year, and then the human malware shut down in China, but after a month, it got back up for the most part. Unfortunately, the sea freight was shut down as well, and also became backed up. There's actually more freight to move than there is boats to move it. While usually we could bring a couple dozen containers into port, we might be lucky if we could bring a couple, period, right now. Air freight is up like 5x. Another source told us that they also had issues with limited shipping space on the boats. Today, factories are actually able, for the most part, to meet order volume, but they can't get the shipments out of the country fast enough, so it doesn't matter. Another off-record source told us the consumer side of this. Quote, ever since stimulus checks hit, demand has been insane. Demand is significantly higher than this time last year. This is normally the slow period, and there's a long lead time on new orders. Doing some further research then on the industry, we looked into what that means. Give us perspective was basically the follow-up to all of that information. So we learned that right now there's roughly 25% higher demand than this time last year, year over year, 2019 to 2020. The demand is unexpectedly high for this period. For further perspective, May of 2020 has so far, for some of the power supply manufacturers we've spoken with, done the same numbers as in December, which with Christmas there, that's one of the highest selling periods of the year. And May also did almost the same numbers as November with Black Friday and Cyber Monday, another actually often the highest selling point in the year period. So that means that some sectors are seeing holiday buying season numbers during what's typically their low season. And because of the long lead time on manufacturing and logistics, that means that no one was ready for this. That's really the problem here. Whatever was in the warehouse when this all started, it vanished quickly. And we were told that companies could tell when the stimulus checks started getting received by Americans. If you're not an American viewer, I'm sure many of the other countries have some similar processes. But for Americans, the, there was a salary threshold and you might have gotten about 1200 bucks. So for the non-American viewers, that's what we're referring to when we talk about stimulus checks. That was from the government to help deal with the economic impact. So the companies were telling us that they knew as soon as the stimulus checks started getting deposited because they saw uh, an immediate ramp in sales volume, which is amusing in the very least. They get 1200 bucks. that's about what it costs to buy a new computer, so it seems like that's what a lot of people did. But either way, the volume spiked on the first few days of that, and then the warehouses were mostly depleted at that point. So then it became an issue of both supply and demand, where both are high, but shipping is the low part on the supply side. So we asked how close supply is to meeting demand, and we were told that the power supplies are getting close, and depending on which company we spoke with, they, they differed here on the answer, but depending on the company, the power supply manufacturers are able to, the factories are able to keep up with the order volume. Again, it's just they can't get it out. So both Corsair and EVGA on record should have a flood of power supplies hitting retailers in early June, uh, so that'd be about this week or next. EVJ further provided Gamers Nexus with this statement that we could give you all. They said, quote, we're starting to ramp up supply. Starting early June, you'll see a lot more inventory across the board, starting for video cards and power supplies. EVJ noted to us that its own EVGA store website had often better inventory than retailers because it's less visited, less trafficked. So first party stores might be a good place to check if there's no stock on major retailers. A lot of them have these now. Corsair has some form of it, EVGA does, NZXT does, so that's a good place to check if you can't get it elsewhere. We next asked some video card manufacturers what demand looks like there, and we were told that, quote, video card supply isn't even close to meeting demand. Silicon supply from AMD and NVIDIA isn't a problem, but demand is huge and no one anticipated this happening. As you likely know from our factory tour videos, the same exact factories that make motherboards also make video cards. That means when one is in demand, they can shift lines to make more of that part. Unfortunately, with both video cards and motherboards in demand, 
That means there's no load balancing mechanism and they're overrun. SMT lines are also used for every other PCB in your computer at some level, so those also run into supply side issues. And speaking with resellers and retailers off record, we learned that Amazon stopped buying power supplies and graphics cards completely for most of April and some of March, which explains some of the shortage there. This was due to logistical reasons like warehouse space being filled with essential items and freight companies getting filled with those as well. Newegg has reportedly been doing its best numbers in a long time. Amazon has just started buying again, so supply will begin to normalize there with time. A power supply maker told us off record that they have, quote, a lot more inventory than usual, but everyone is buying it. Starting this week, we're getting a lot more supply. If demand keeps increasing, it's hard to say if that stuff will be readily available for the average user. I can tell you that there will be a lot more shipping out, they told us. Another power supply manufacturer told us that their supplier factory is awaiting orders pending freight space. So ultimately the TLDR is shipping was the biggest issue. But there are more than that, like margin being a reason you can't just get faster shipping. But remember that the company whose name is on the power supply, they do a lot of the, the QC work. They do a lot of the specification. They provide the spec on how they want it to be made. They help work with the supplier on maybe what new bells and whistles they can find. Hey, what's the new interesting marketing thing we can throw in there to say it's higher efficiency on the PFC or whatever. But the companies that have their label on it, although they get a lot of credit for making the product and that is one of the most important parts, they're not the ones who are in the factory assembling it. So you have two different parties here and both of them have to be in alignment with supply availability and with order quantity, otherwise nothing really gets done. So that's why it's it's a lot more complex than just Corsair or EVGA making it because they don't have their own factories. Or then Enermax or NZXT, even bigger in the case of NZXT where they aren't that large of a power supply maker, so they have to rely on factories and companies that do lower volume aren't as high priority. So they're gonna have even more trouble getting back to shelves for retail availability than the biggest sellers of power supplies would because they're the most valuable customers at the supplier factories. But it depends on the supply orders that or agreements that are in place, obviously. We were told that most of the manufacturers should have shipments starting to flood at least the US by June, and that means other places as well. For Canada, most of your shipments come into port in the US and they get trucked up. Sometimes they go to port in Vancouver. But uh, that's what, and, and that gets into a tariffs discussion too, some of that. But that's uh, the window for availability. We were told that video card, motherboard, and power supplies should start to normalize for availability for sure in Q4, but it looks like it might normalize by Q3. It depends on which component you're talking about. Video cards could get interrupted in the middle if there's a video card launch from NVIDIA. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. That's the other problem too is. To our knowledge, the board partners are not currently manufacturing new cards for NVIDIA GPUs in their factories, in their pick and place lines and SMT lines. But as soon as they start getting silicon from NVIDIA, there's going to be a stop to the existing supply. So you're just there's not going to be any inventory if it's already selling out now and they stop making that stuff to make something that's not out yet. So that's what you're looking at for complications on the video card side. That's it for this one, though. If you want to support this type of reporting, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and grab one of our new mouse mats. They're on back order, as are the mod mats, because we're having trouble getting those made, too. We're just like these companies are in that way. And uh, they're on the way, though, and we've got the dates on the website for when the back orders arrive. We're pretty accurate with those. Uh, often we overshoot it so that you might end up with it a bit early. But you can check store.gamersnexus.net to support us there or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching another investigative piece. We really enjoy doing these. This is my personal favorite type of piece to do. So let us know what other ones you want us to do. It's just it's a bunch of phone calls, but that's kind of fun. So uh, leave them in the description in the comments below what you want to see us do next. We'll see you all next time.